Hello, I'm Dynasty the Mirror. We have another I-Team report tonight for you. A criminal investigation now has been launched in Bridgeport, Connecticut, after the medical examiner ruled that 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields died from an accidental drug overdose. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace says there's a separate investigation into the actions of case detectives. This is exactly what we have been screaming and crying for. Reaction from the attorney representing Lauren Smithfield's family after learning Bridgeport Police narcotics and vice detectives with assistance from the federal DEA will now investigate what led to the death of the 23-year-old fitness buff in her apartment last month. Yesterday, the office of the medical examiner ruled her death an accident, saying she overdosed on a combination of fentanyl, prescription drugs, and alcohol. According to this police report, we obtained an older man who said he had met Lauren on a dating app called 911, but there is no mention of drugs in the narrative. So fentanyl is a top drug, and then they have a, a couple other drugs they found in her system that are typically associated with date rape drugs. And so we want to know the source of that stuff. We don't know how they spoke to the man, if they questioned him. We don't know anything. As far as we know, they just gave him a pat on the back. In an exclusive sit-down interview with us last week, the family accused detectives of mishandling the investigation from the beginning, failing to collect evidence, and refusing to provide any information on the status of the probe. They thought they was going to just throw her away like she was garbage, yeah. like she wasn't important, like she didn't have family members that loved her. With mounting pressure on the police department, the mayor yesterday issued a public statement confirming an internal affairs investigation that we first reported, saying there is no tolerance for anything less than respect and sensitivity for family members and their loss. We're going through this over and over again. It's just we're grieving. We got to fight and grieve and be our own prosecutor, be our own investigator. It's crazy. This is nonsense when the police should just do their job. The attorney says he now plans to write the Justice Department, asking for a full civil rights investigation into the actions of the police department and the detectives who initially handled the case. Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York. For a march in memory of Lauren Smith Fields, Darnell Crosland says this event will focus important attention on the case. So many watching. He's the attorney for the family of the 23-year-old Bridgeport resident. She died last month. News 12 Connecticut broke the story telling how Lauren's family outraged by what they describe as an inadequate response by Bridgeport police. Crosland says she died after a date with an older man whom she met on the dating app Bumble. City Councilwoman Michelle Small represents Lauren's district. She says tomorrow is important to show support for Lauren's mom and other family members. I am a mom also, and I can't imagine what she is going through as a mother, because I am a mother and I only have one daughter, and I wouldn't want to be in her situation. If all lives matter, that can only exist and be true if the lives of young black women like Lauren Smith Fields matters. And that's why we're marching, because the valuation that they've placed on this family is unacceptable. That march at Bridgeport Police Headquarters at 300 Congress Street starting at 1.30 in the afternoon tomorrow, set to end at the Margaret E. Morton Government Center at 999 Broad. The event including a birthday celebration for Lauren, who would have been 24 tomorrow. News 12's Frank Recchia broke the story. He'll be there, and he will file a full report. Now at 6, the latest on a story that is making national headlines. New details in the case of a deadly stabbing in Edgewater. It's been days since 27-year-old Christian Abumseli was found inside his luxury apartment. Not too far away, his girlfriend, Courtney Clenny, was covered in blood. Tonight, Clenny's attorney is speaking only to CBS4, insisting that his client was acting in self-defense. CBS 4's Ashley Dyer is live in Edgewater with more on her side of the story. Ashley? Well, Elliot and Carly, Courtney Clenny's attorney says just about a week before all this happened, she removed her boyfriend, Christian Obuselli, from the lease because of other domestic violence issues. But apparently, he continued coming back. Ultimately, her attorney says that's what led to this tragedy. He was not uh, welcome to stay. He was not on the lease. 
um, but he did make his way uh, back up to the apartment on several occasions during that week. On April 3rd, Courtney Clenny stabbed her boyfriend of two years to death. Christian Obamselli was rushed to the hospital, but was pronounced dead. A little, you know, disturbing to see someone that stabbed someone else, like, publicly outside, roaming around freely. Attorneys working on this case say the two had a toxic and complicated relationship. Kind of surprised that she was my neighbor. Melanie Vivas and others at One Paricio all wondering the same thing what actually happened. Fortunately on social media, it's been kind of viral. As the investigation continues, the questions are piling up. But Clenny's attorney, Frank Prado, says people are pointing fingers without knowing all of the facts. He says despite the national attention this case is gaining, his client is innocent. In today's uh, climate, um, what somebody says automatically becomes a fact. We need to get back to understanding, wait for the facts to come out. We cannot rush to judgment. Prado says since this happened, clenny has been receiving professional help to deal with the trauma. The incidents of that night were very traumatic, and uh, I think almost anyone in that position, um, at least an innocent person in that position, uh, would be extremely traumatized. Now, we've reached out to police several times today, but the homicide detectives investigating this case have yet to give us an update. We're live in Edgewater tonight. Ashley Dyer, CBS 4 News. He was a friend to everyone. Very caring, funny, very bright. He had big dreams. An emotional family still trying to grasp the death of 27-year-old Christian Toby Obumseli in what's being called a deadly domestic incident. It's a story that's making national headlines. It happened in an expensive Edgewater condo where the units cost millions of dollars. Loved ones say the man was caring and had a great spirit. CBS4's Trish Christakis joins us live from Miami with more. Trish? Yeah, I spoke with Christian of Boom Sally's family earlier today, and they said he was a kind and soft-spoken man. They said they found out about his death when a medical examiner called them asking if they can donate his organs. Devastation, they say, doesn't come close to what they're feeling tonight. They flew in from Texas, unfortunately learned of his death when a medical examiner contacted them uh, requesting permission to donate the organs. That's how they learned of his sudden death. Miami Police Department responded to a domestic violence incident at this apartment complex in Edgewater, where they say 27-year-old Christian Abumaselli was stabbed with a knife. He later died at Jackson Memorial Hospital. All they're looking for is justice. We know the suspect uh, that was involved in this incident has not been arrested. Uh, I'm confident having had a meeting with the state attorney's office uh, that uh, they were very attentive. They answered all the necessary questions. Miami PD says there was a woman on the scene with him. The family identified her as his girlfriend. And in their preliminary investigation, determined that both Abumaselli and the woman had been involved in a physical altercation. Abumaselli's brother says he wants to see an arrest. I do believe she is a killer, the killer and she does need to be arrested. Police have not made any arrests. CBS 4 News has learned the woman's name, but we are choosing not to identify her because this is a domestic violence investigation. The family of Abu Maseli says he was a kind man and had many life goals and aspirations. Devastation doesn't quite describe what my family's experiencing right now. Yesterday, we finally told our 93-year-old grandmother that her grandson, who was expected to come home to Texas to visit for his 28th birthday, will no longer or ever be returning home. And in a statement, the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office says that it will review the police department's evidence. Once this investigation is complete, they will then take appropriate action. Live in Miami, Trish Krasakis, CBS 4 News. Peace family, I hope all is well. Hope your day is off to a great start. Hope you had an excellent morning. And guess what? I cannot wait. This Sunday, we are leaving. We are going to Sierra Leone, and we are going to have an excellent time in Sierra Leone. I cannot wait. Today, I wanted to speak on the clear double standard when it comes to Laura Smith Fields and Toby Obumselli. Toby Obumselli was murdered by his snow queen. He was recently murdered by a snow queen in his condo in Miami. 
And I notice a lot of men and women, but specifically women, black women, who are saying they are not going to support him because of the derogatory remarks that he made against black women. I do not support those remarks. I do not agree with them. Do not, I do not agree with him at all. You know, I love my sisters. But there's one, there's one problem. And this is where it becomes hypocritical. You had a young lady named Laura Smith Fields who made similar remarks about black men. Similar derogatory remarks about black men and how she's going to find her a snow king. And she ends up dead. Laying next to a snow king. So then here comes the we need justice for Laura Smith Fields. Even though she made derogatory remarks about what could be your brother, your uncle, your father. And she went, she found her a, a snow king on a dating app. When she ends up dead next to the snow king, we still have team, you know, we need to support Laura Smith Fields. We need justice for Laura Smith Fields. So why can't team uh, justice for Laura Smith Fields, why can't you have that same sympathy for brother Toby? Why can't you have that same sympathy and support for Brother Toby? I'm just asking. Like, I don't understand. Why can't you support one and not support the other? When they're both similar. Or similar circumstances. Why can't you do that? It's hypocritical. There's a clear double standard. I just, you know, put your answer in the comment section. Why are you supporting one and not supporting the other? Why do you want justice for one and not justice for the other? That's where I'm confused. That's where I'm kind of lost. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, family dinosaur search for who.